Hello, hello out there in base world. It's Jeff from jeffrey-thomas.com and I'm going to go ahead and preview my base tab for Miss You by the Rolling Stones. So make sure you're requesting this off the website and we can go ahead and follow through together. Um, I'm going to be using a Fender Heavy Pick and uh, it's played with a pick on the studio recording. I don't know what pick he played, what he used, but it's played with a pick. You can play with your fingers, but once again, the tone is, is with a pick. So we'll go line by line because the counting is a little bit tricky. So here we go from the intro. Ready, go. Okay, second line. Ready, go. Okay, some little 16th notes right there. And then we're gonna go into the third line. One, and two, three. Okay, and I pointed out some of these notes that he's hitting there. I'll explain as we uh, go further into the tune. So now we're at the verse, last measure of the third line. Ready, go. all the way through the fourth line sorry now we're on the fifth line nice and slow one and two and three and four piano one and two and three and then last measure fifth line B flat I'll explain in a minute so we'll do that last measure of the fifth line again okay moving on to the last line And then the chorus, last two measures on the page, ready, go. Sorry, last measure. Okay, so the tune is basically going back and forth from A minor 7 to D minor 7. It's just a two chord vamp for the most part, this whole song. Um, now for bass players that want to start to get their theory thing together, which a lot of my students are, you should be able to look at a bass line and go, okay, um, two measures on A minor seven, two measures on D minor seven. That's the groove that's going on. So you would come back up and, you know, the keyboard player, the guitar players are going to be on A minor seven for the first two measures. You should be able to look at your line and go like this. This is A, we got A again. So that's an octave of the root. Then we come back to G, which is the flat seven. Hammer on there from the G to the A, no big deal. Come back to the root, then the octave, A, back to the G, and then G to E, which is the fifth of the chord, and then finish up with the G to the A. So basically what you should be able to do is identify the scale degrees of the bass line against the chords. And as if I remember correctly, this is what drove a lot of the bass players crazy when I was coming up. You know, all the good bass players that I was working with, they were like, I gotta play keyboard. And I'm like, why? And they're like, because I need to understand chords. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. Cause you're not just gonna randomly play notes. You're gonna play notes that are supporting the chords. Okay. so. That brings me to two notes that are hit on this tune that are very, very interesting, and they're both played over the D minor chord. So the first one would be at the second measure of the third line, and here's what he plays. Ready, go. That's a B natural right there. Last time I checked, that's a B natural. So he's if we're on a D minor seven chord, he's playing D, which is the root, D octave, drops back to C, which is the flat seven, then he goes to B natural, which is the sharp six, okay? Then he finishes up with A, which is the fifth of the chord. So why is that B natural so interesting? Well, it's coming from a Dorian scale. A Dorian mode or scale, they're both the same, so don't get tripped up on that. 
is a minor scale with a raised six, raised six. And I have one written out just in one octave form right here for you. So this is a D Dorian scale and it's played like this. There's the B, there's the C and there's D. Why is this important? D minor, straight D minor, D Aeolian, or D natural minor is gonna have a B flat in it. It's gonna be. So we have a B flat, then the C, and then the D. Okay, that brings me to the last measure of the fifth line where he does actually play a B flat. Once again, we're over a D minor chord, right? So we've got D, we've got the octave D, we go to a C, which is the flat seven, and then, Man, when I heard that, I was just like, what? And the answer is yes to my what? He's playing a B flat. So what he is doing on this is he's, he's at certain points in the tune over the D minor seven, he's playing either the sharp six, which is the B natural, or the flat six, which is the B flat. Completely different sounds. Like, let's listen. I'll play the last measure of the fifth line. Ready, go. Sorry. Okay, then I'll jump back up to the second measure of the third line with the B natural in it. Okay, so in my ears, <clears throat> the difference between the B natural and the B flat is the B natural sounds a little bit more light. It's, uh, it's closer to a major scale than the B flat. The B flat is kind of dark, you know? Um, right? I mean, like that kind of a straight minor feel. So it's super, super interesting that he did that. Um, the other lick that's, that's really cool in this uh, that I should point out is over the A chord. Let's go to the second measure of the second line. Well, we're on our A minor seven, and we've got A, octave A, and then we go down to a G, right? Then he comes up to 12 and plays that hip little lick right there. Well, this is chromatic. So we're starting at the 12th fret on the first string. This is a G, then we go to a G sharp, and then we go to an A. So it's just, And the interesting thing is he only does that lick over the A minor seven, over the, over the, that chord. Um, then just because I know people are going to bring it up, can this be played with the fingers? Yeah, absolutely. So. Right. But you, you, if you're going to play it, a lot of guys might just go. They may just use their thumb and bring a palm mute in to try and get it to sound like a pick. So I think, um, I, I know Daryl Jones is, is with the Stones now and he's a monster bass player and he is not using a pick, but he's like playing it like. Right. He's totally changing the line and doing it like funk, which works great. Don't get me wrong. But. I went to the original recording and got what's happening from that, you know, from that track. So uh, I have the whole tab or the majority of the whole song. It does go on quite a bit with the same stuff over and over and over again. But hopefully um, that answered a few theory questions that may be lurking about like why these notes are played specifically over certain chords. And that is a very, if you're not curious about it and you're a serious bass player, you should start getting curious about it. I mean, most good bass players know exactly what I'm talking about. You need to know what the lines are, how they relate to the chords. And this is all 100% music theory. Um, so, yeah. If anyone, please, please feel free to post on any good bass theory books they found. Um, the last one that I've been using with students is Chuck Shear, um, Bass Improviser's Method, which is pretty good, but it's, it's very scattered 
as far as the the presentation of the information it's really scattered so I usually just use a lot of some supplemental worksheets that I have done already and you know make sure that we're following like a, a college level curriculum for theory just for the base but feel free to post if you find a good straight ahead theory book for base that's written in standard notation okie doke and until next time I will catch up with you later